Hey everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk All Things Audio in the Plugin World. I'm your host, Carlo Libertini, here on Music Marketing TV, and thank you for tuning in. We've got a really cool brand new plugin from Slate Digital called Storch. Scott Storch is a Grammy nominated, amazing producer who has years of experience working with top artists from around the world. And when you combine all of that experience and creativity with an amazing company like Slate Digital, you know you're going to get an amazing plugin. I've been working with this one for a few weeks now. I took some time to really get to know it, its personality, its, its quirkiness, its fun, its creativity, and it's just been amazing. What it's going to do basically is bring in a lot of different creative elements in one easy to use plugin window. For example, if you had to recreate this plugin, you would probably go crazy layering maybe five or six different plugin elements together and then bouncing between them all, working harder instead of smarter. Instead, we have Storch here to take care of all of those needs for you. Okay, so why don't we dive right in? I have created a session for us. And if you don't have Storch yet or any Slate Digital plugins, just visit the links below. You could download a demo today or find out some more information. We have some descriptions in uh, links in the description below. And if you haven't yet, like and subscribe our page. Become part of our music family, music marketing family. Today, we can get access to hundreds of pro audio tutorials for free. Become part of our community, and we'd really appreciate it and love to have you on board. All right, let's take a listen now. I created a quick session here for us to play with today. Let's check out Storch. Now the plugin you're looking at here is on my drum loop. And I have storage right now in almost every one of these track elements. Bass, kick, drums, piano pad, and synth. Oh, I love that reverb tail at the end. All right, so why don't we start at the top? If you haven't seen storage filter yet or haven't um, tried it yourself, Let's walk through some of the reasons that make this super special. I'm gonna go to my, here we go. We'll go to the piano pad and let's open Storch Filter. All right, and let's play just a piano pad. There we go. And let's set it to the default setting. Now on a default setting, this is a really great building block preset. I'm glad they included this because there's nothing going on here. When I play this, as you can hear, the default setting is kind of like a bypass preset. This is a great way for you to start layering it, but also what I did was use it to start learning about the characteristics of this plugin. So for example, with this piano pad playing, let's start at the top. We have some amazing presets here that are artfully crafted. Here's one of my user presets right here that we have on probably the uh, kick drum or the bass guitar. And we've got bass guitar presets, drums, effects, because yes, this is an amazing multi-effect processor. Instruments, even presets for full mixes and vocals. And of course, you can save your presets easy right uh, by clicking here. Now, if you wanna also activate the information bobs, right here, you can toggle them on and off. I like to keep them on myself uh, because I, I work with a lot of plugins all the time and it's a nice way to just get a quick reminder of what something does in a second, just like that. All right, so the presets are great. Also, if you wanna access the user manual, click the Slate Digital icon here and it'll give you the Storch filter, user guide, and online support. I really love how that's included. All right, so with the default setting, let's start at the top. Now, you can see that it includes five different effects here. Reverb, chorus, saturation, spread, and phase. The way this is really going to work or boost your creativity is when these unique plugins in combination with the LFO, the low frequency oscillator here with the different wave shapes, it's gonna give you different results every time. This isn't really just one set it and forget it. I mean, you could create movement with this plugin. You can create taste. You can actually create elements that help bring your listeners deeper into your mixes. 
And every time you combine these different effects, you're going together, you're gonna, you can get creative different results. So let's take a listen to the reverb. I'm gonna activate the reverb here. Now the reverb is on. And what I'll do is here, uh, come up to my type and set it to flat. So I'm gonna hear the full frequency band right here. I'm gonna make it all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And this is the reverb. Here it is off. And here it's on. All right, so that's the reverb. And another thing I'll point out here is the FX boost. If you want to boost the effect, if you had, uh, let's say, a chorus on as well, and the boost, it's going to boost the sum of those effects together too. So keep that in mind. There isn't an effects boost for just each one. Every time you layer and add more effects, it all sums here, and you can push them all equally together, or the level, uh, the effect of them all. All right, let's go to chorus. Let me turn it off. That's without. Let's bring it in. All right, now let's boost the effect of the chorus. Here we go. Let's bring in the reverb again and boost that. So you can see the effect boost really, it does something unusual. It really makes, it like jams everything more together. And again, this is a perfect example where the sum is always greater than the parts. It's, it's incredible. I love playing with this. Let's go to saturation. Now this is gonna add some overdrive, if you will. So I'd be really careful with this one because some super creative effects, for example, on vocals or bass guitar. But let's hear it on this pad. Okay, here's without is with and obviously if you effect boost that you're adding more of that harmonic distortion that richness to it all right and then we've got a spread here's without so let's talk about this what the spread is actually doing is it's kind of creating a cavity if you will in the middle which is a nice way to make room for other elements like your drums or your lead vocals. Uh, and it's kind of a set it and forget it here. Maybe in future versions, there might be a little bit of way to add a little bit of some mix here because sometimes spread obviously can be relative. You want to spread a little more or spread a little bit less, but you do have the effects boost here. So you can always go more like that. Check it out. Here's without the boost. Here's without the spread. All right, and next we have phase. Phase is gonna be fun. It's gonna give you that uh, kind of like mysterious uh, effect. Let's boost this. So as I said before, when you add these together, let's say reverb, and some phase, you're gonna get a very unique combination of these working together. And let's do some spread and chorus. Now again, I'm just experimenting here together with you. Oh, I like that. Here's without storage filter on. And here's width. I really like that. I might leave it on this. Really nice. Okay, now that's a quick look at the effects section. Now again, every time you add an element here, or you tweak something, you really just, it's like a mystery box. You get some creative and fun and interesting every time. Here you have our in, and here's our out meters. Very important. But in the center, you've got the storage filter here with the cutoff that you can adjust all the way from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and a resonance here. The way this is going to work is obviously you can choose your type. Right now, I have it set to flat. So we could actually choose a high pass. Uh, a, we have the band pass 
and then we're going to have a low pass. Let's try each one. And then you get the slope anywhere from one time, two, four, and six. And you can see closely that the icon actually changes. Here's one time, and here's six times. Let's leave it on two for now. And here is the band pass. And then let's check out the low pass filter. Now, some of the creative potential you can get here is in automation. Imagine automating this effect, the cutoff frequency here, and you can actually create some really interesting sweeps in your mixes during certain parts of your mix to really help bring attention, you know, or add emotion to certain parts of your mixes. So I think automating storage filter, the cutoff frequency, and some of the effects on and off could really help bring this plugin even more alive. But who doesn't love automation? All right, next down here below, let's leave it on our bear pass. Here we have our low frequency oscillator settings. I'm gonna turn this on. So the parameters down here, you've got the rate, obviously, 4-4 up to four th uh, uh, 30 seconds, and it'll change. Go for a faster one or more slower. And then, of course, we get the depth. Let's start at zero and bring it up. Here's without. Let's bring in our oscillator now. Nice. So in, after that, we've got phase. And then, obviously, the really important wave shape because we're working here with a more of a, a smooth sine wave it's going to be graceful you can have a sawtooth you could have square kind of like an like a on off and then a more graceful Next. Love that. Times it perfectly. That could really add some interest to your mixes. And then kind of a random one. So starting with the default setting, which again is kind of like a bypass preset, we now added chorus some spread, give it some really nice mysterious washiness. Uh, we put it in our bandpass filter, our cutoff frequency around 648 here. We didn't touch the resonance at all, but we added an oscillator here with a rate of 44, 91% using the random shape. So I recommend when you get to a point like this that you really like, for example, let's go back to my smooth sine wave. Just simply come up to this option right here and choose Save As and give it a name. I'll just choose my initials and call it Smooth and then Save. And then you'll see it now labels itself right here. If I select the box area under User Presets, I now have two different ones. Here's one preset I made earlier. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. There. So it's really easy. And the reason why I stress saving your presets as you go along, because 
you know, it doesn't look like much, but there are a lot of parameters here and a little goes a long way. So if you change just one parameter, even a little bit, it's going to change the characteristic behavior affecting the audio playback. That's why this is a really powerful plugin, but also very useful and creative. So spending time with it, you're obviously going to get more familiar. I wanted to cover some of the basics here, and I think it's really important to know what's going on. Now let's have a little bit more fun. Okay, so that is on the pianos. Let's have a little more fun here. Let's see. Nice. Here's our drum loop. This is really going to change the drum loop. Here's the original loop. And let's bring in storage filter. Nice. Now, if I wanted to, I could select that track and it's going to be different in your dog choice. If you're working within Pro Tools or Logic or Studio One like I'm using here, I'm going to open up my automation lane, select my cutoff filter and add a lane for that. All right. There. Now I could take a section of this and let's take a listen. Perfect. I'm going to add a node here and here and here and here. And let's add some automation because I think this is really where it helps shine. So we automated the cutoff filter here. Like it. Let's really exaggerate that. All right, check it out now. Nice. How creative that can be. I absolutely love, love, love that. So as easy as that, as I mentioned before, I think automation is going to really be your best friend sometimes when using something like this. Because it's like you get a sound you like and then you want to take it that one step further. Well, that's what automation is for. Experiment, have fun. You saw it here. It will be different on your DAW, whatever you're using. Again, on Studio One, yeah, it's as easy as that. All right, let's have a little fun. I'm using a preset called Buncha Crunch, and that's here under the bass section. Let's go through some presets here on the drums. Let's go to Alien Drums. Watch your ears a little bit. Uh, these presets won't be too loud, but I don't want to blow anybody's ears out. Just being conscientious. Let's scroll through them. I really like that one. And don't forget the effects are super high quality, especially that reverb. Let's go to the next drum preset, HP Crunch. That's without, and that's with. Love it. Here's the next one, in the club bathroom. You can see the automation there we, we just penned in. Next one, spread too thin. Next one, storage drums. And then you can go on and on and on from there. So that's a listen to it here on the drums. Let's go to our bass track. Let's bring this in. <clears throat> You can see we're using the preset in the club bathroom. Here's without. Let's bring it in. And let's change our cutoff frequency. I like that. Let's change the saturation to a chorus. Here's without, here's with. Really smooths it out, rounds it out a little bit. Let's listen to that in conjunction with the drums. Now they both have storage filter on. Let's bring the drums back in. 
put it back on Bunch of Crunch. Oh. Now, what I'm feeling already here, just spending this time with you, let's talk about this, is that I'm already motivated to keep working. I'm motivated to keep creating. And that's what a quality plugin should do for you. It should always serve you, not only to help channel what you feel and hear in your head, but to help inspire you to keep wanting to be creative. That's what I love about Slate Digital. And I think the storage filter just nails it. Really great stuff. All right, now here on our kick drum, let's take a listen to this. Have some fun there. Here's without, we're on a preset that I created called 808 CL phase. Cause I'm using phase and a little bit of saturation on this preset I created. Let's bring it in. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to maintain the 808-ness of this kick drum, but add some unique character to it. And that's exactly what we did here. Here's without, again, let me lower the volume. So for example, if you're working with an 808 kick, you could try this yourself at home with the storage filter. Let's bring it on. Still get some low end there and some fun from the phasiness. Let's take the phase off and let's go to the chorus. Because sometimes you can get some similarities there. I like that. I'll leave it on that. All right. And next, let's have a little fun with the synth here. Here's this section. Here's without. So I'm using the storage filter to spread it out of the way uh, to make room for the other elements that I want in the center, like that 808 kit that we were just listening to, that kick, kick drum. Let's bring it in now. Let's change our cutoff filter. So I'm going to bring my pianos now and I'm going to change my cutoff filter of the synth now so I can blend it in better with the piano um, and by listening to both of these tracks together. Again, here's the piano. And let's bring in the pad. It's like, it's like they're working as a wave that kind of draws you in and brings you back, draws you in and brings you back. And that's what music should do. Call your attention to the feeling of attracting you to it more. All right, let's bring in the bass drum with the piano pad and synth. And let's bring in the kick drum. You'll see I have nothing else on here but my mix tool uh, just for a little bit of leveling uh, with the piano pad. All of this processing is done with a storage filter, storage filter, storage filter, storage filter, storage filter on each one. So let's listen to the entire tracks, all the tracks at once now. Nice. Here's without storage filter on. Why don't we do this and take it from the top? Here's what we started with. And let's bring in storage filter on 
our tracks one more time and let's hear our mix as it has developed. And of course, this is nothing but fun. Is that automation? Love that reverb tail. And there you have it, storage filter by the great folks at Slate Digital. But the best way, obviously, is to find out for yourself. Thanks for spending time with me today. My name is Carlo Libertini. This is Let's Talk, all things audio in the plugin world here on music marketing. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, become part of our family today, and dive right into hundreds of free tutorials that we make just for you. Thank you, Slate Digital. Thank you, Storage Filter. Uh, stay busy, stay creative, everyone, and thank you for watching.